Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video we took a look at how to use Web3 to make direct calls to a contract and bypass any UI elements or server-side code that restricts you from running sensitive functionality. In this video we're going to take a look at different access control functionality so that you're familiar with it and when you're reviewing smart contract code you actually understand what's going on. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to increase this font a little bit and now we're going to add a simple authorization scheme using a constructor. So we're going to say constructor and we're going to set an owner within the constructor. So owner equals message dot sender. So what this is going to do is when the contract is deployed initially it's going to set an owner to the person who deployed this contract. So we're going to need to add a variable up here for that, and that's going to be an address variable. So address, owner, and then let's use that. So within the kill function, what we're going to do is set a require statement. And we're going to require that the message dot sender, who is making a call to kill, actually equals the owner. So now if the person who calls kill is not the person who initially deployed this contract, then kill will not run. So it's kind of like adding an administrator or user. And there's another way you can do that that's actually a bit more efficient so we don't have to add this require statement everywhere. And it's called a modifier. So you've seen a modifier before. And we're going to add that and use it for authorization. So we'll say modifier and we'll call it only owner and all we're going to do is take this require statement and just move it into the modifier because now we have reuse code by calling the modifier and then we're going to add in an underscore semicolon and all that does is it says if this require statement passes return to the function and run it so what we have to do is add in only owner now this function is protected from everybody who is not the person who deployed the contract. So if we wanted to add this in other places now it's quite easy. All we do is go only owner and now the deposit function is protected. So it's a way to reuse code and it makes the access control a little easier. So if we were to test this out we can hop over to here and compile it and then Make sure you're using the JavaScript VM now because we're not actually using a local blockchain. So if you still have it open from the last video, just switch that. And then what we're going to do is deploy it. Now we deployed it with this first one, so this is the owner, right? This 6B1 address, that's the owner of this contract because it was set in the constructor when it was deployed. So if we ran the kill function with that, it would actually work. What we're going to do is switch to our attacker address. We'll say the second one this should fail. So if we hit kill, we're going to get an error. And the error says revert this transaction. So the transaction has been reverted because we didn't actually have authorization to run that function because when we called the function it said, hey, this uses only owner. Only owner came in here and says, hey, only owner requires that the person calling it is actually the owner and the owner is set in the constructor as the person who deployed it. So hopefully Tracing that back all makes sense, and it makes sense why you would use a modifier over just putting the require statement in each function. And this is just a simple way to handle access control on the blockchain. There's other ways to do it, and if you hop back into the blog, I'm actually going to show how to use Open Zeppelin to have role-based access control. So we could have actually just done an import statement on here that imported Open Zeppelin. And Open Zeppelin actually has an only owner that we can add just to all of our functions at that point, rather than having to create this modifier ourselves. But instead of showing that, because we already showed basically how that works here, if you hop back in the blog, we're going to show a more advanced example of doing more fine grained access control using different authorization levels. So your homework is to hop back in the blog look at the code, understand what it does, put it into Remix, and then run it. 
and then play around with it and then read the description in the blog about what's happening. One more thing in your tool belt, if you see it while you're reviewing code, you'll understand what it's doing. This is not really to teach you how to do secure programming, it's more to show you what you're gonna see while you're evaluating code and how to trace back who can do what. So hopefully all of that made sense. And there is one more thing I wanna do before we conclude this video, and that is to fix the issue that we had with the withdraw. So we're gonna say require, balances message.sender and we're going to say that the balance of the message.sender is greater than or equal to the amount and that's just a simple way to require that we actually have an amount within this contract before we can withdraw funds instead of stealing them from other users so that concludes this video go back and do your homework that i just assigned to you and i'll see you next week where we look at a different aspect of the blockchain